Ladies and gentlemen, this is Lions Den with another news and commentary. Now, the other day I was going to try to do this video, Democracy Now, Dem Democracy Now's video of the investigation of Bri what happened with Breonna Taylor. Unfortunately, reaction messed up. Now uh, it's fixed, and so I'm going to show you uh, the video is in, in its entirety of what really happened with this investigation. So I'm going to go ahead and play it, and I'm going to continue the rest of my commentary. This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman. After nearly 200 days of protests calling for justice for Breonna Taylor, the 26-year-old African-American woman shot to death in her own apartment by plainclothes Louisville officers serving a no-knock warrant, new evidence is raising troubling questions about the integrity of the crime scene after the raid and the investigation that followed. On Thursday, a grand jury failed to charge any of the three white Louisville police officers involved in the killing of Breonna Taylor with her death. Kentucky Kentucky's governor, Louisville's mayor, have joined calls to release the grand jury transcripts. Vice News has obtained body camera footage from Louisville Metro Police Department officers and SWAT team members from the night of the raid that raises questions about the investigation. On Saturday, Vice posted a clip that shows former Detective Brett Hankison, one of the three officers who fired their guns and the only one now facing charges. Um, he's facing charges of first-degree wanton endangerment for gunshots, not that his hit um, Brianna Taylor's apartment or her, but that hit a neighboring apartment. In the footage, Hankison can be seen entering Taylor's apartment while investigators are there examining the crime scene. At one point in the footage, Hankison asks about a shell casing on the ground saying, that's theirs? Before an unidentified officer tells him to leave until the PIU, the Public Integrity Unit, arrives. This is the clip. That's theirs? Oh, it's ours. It looks like there's in there. All right, y'all, Brett Hankerson, the officer that's shooting up and was charged with, not only he was fired by LMPD, but what was, what was charged with wanton endangerment over Breonna Taylor, Taylor, Taylor's neighbor's apartment. Now, he just said that's theirs with a question mark. But guess what, y'all? It's, it's more to this story, so check this out. Talk about the auto. Footage also shows Detective Hankison lingers in Taylor's apartment even after he's told to leave the scene of the active investigation of an officer involved shooting in which he is one of the officers. It also shows that none of the officers who were part of the raid got separated or paired with an escort. This comes as a ballistics report from the Kentucky State Police was unable to determine that Taylor's boyfriend, Kenneth Walker, shot Officer Jonathan Mattingly as he has uh, been claimed to have done by the Kentucky Attorney General, or if Mattingly was hit by friendly fire. During the raid, Walker fired a warning shot at the front door and said he believed it was a home invasion. He, he didn't know who was raiding his apartment. He even called the police to ask for help. He Exactly. That's my point, y'all. And Candace Owens said that he shot at officers and blah, blah, blah. And it's proof of point that he didn't know who they were. They thought it was intruders or burglars were trying to break into their apartment. And he, and he shot a warning shot through the door. Didn't hit the officer at all. Let's continue. As a license to carry firearms. Meanwhile, the footage from the body cameras appears to corroborate several parts of Walker's testimony. Walker says when officers arrested him, they threatened to set a dog on him and told him he'd spend the rest of his life in jail. This is a clip from the body camera footage of his arrest. Walk straight back, I will send this dog on you. Walk back to my voice. Walk back, I will send this dog. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what you're about to hear is um, Hankerson. Brett Hankerson, the officer that was responsible of shooting up um, Breonna Taylor, Taylor's neighbor's apartment, he's going to tell Kenneth Walker, you're going to go to jail for the rest of your, you're going to go to jail for the rest of your life. Watch.
joined by part of the team that obtained this footage. Roberto Ferdman is a Vice News correspondent. His latest co-authored piece, headline, New Body Cam Footage, raises questions about Breonna Taylor death investigation. He's just back from Louisville, joining us from New York. Welcome, Roberto, to Democracy Now! Tell us who is shouting this right now and talk about the significance of this footage. I think most people listening or watching right now are saying, wait a second, I thought there was no footage that the um, officers who engaged in this no-knock raid did not have body cam cameras. Um, so, so you're right. From the very beginning, um, the police department uh, and the city have maintained that none of the officers who executed the search warrant were wearing body cameras because they're part of a unit called the Criminal Interdiction Division. Um, and they often perform their duties in plain clothes as they were that night. And um, up until then, because since the policy has been changed, they didn't have to wear body cameras. Um, that being said, there are many officers and SWAT team members who arrive on scene immediately afterward. Um, and all of those officers, most of them are uniformed, um, have, to be, have to wear body cameras, had to at the time, and were wearing body cameras. So we acquired about 45 different body cameras. Um, I mean, it's many, many hours of footage. Some of these are 30 minutes long, or many of them are. Um, and we sifted through those. The, the video of um, where you see uh, Kenneth Walker being arrested, walking backwards, that's the body camera of uh, a canine officer who comes over to kind of rush Walker uh, to walk backwards faster. The other body cameras from one of the SWAT team members, uh, there are probably about 10 others, um, and, and we're working toward more stories at the moment to help folks show what can be gleaned from, from those videos and from other documents and as well. explain who's screaming at him and who also was captured on camera saying to him, Kenny Walker, this is Brianna's boyfriend, um, screaming at him, you're going to spend the rest of your time, your rest of your life in jail and uh, threatening to sick the dog on him? So um, the officer who's threatening to sick the dog on him is uh, an LMPD officer whose last name I believe is Nimono. Um, the person who tells Kenny that he's going to spend the rest of his life in jail is Brett Hankison, one of the three officers LMPD says fired their weapon that night um, and, and who was fired uh, over the summer, I, be I believe it was at the beginning of July. Um, but but Hankison is, is not not just the officer who tells Kenny that he's going to spend the rest of his life in jail. He's also the officers, as you pointed out, um, who can be seen inside of the apartment. Uh, he walks up to the front door immediately after SWAT clears the apartment, uh, leaves, and then comes back and, and steps into the apartment. None of this is supposed to happen. Um, in fact. What is supposed to happen is very far from it. All the officers who are involved in any critical incident, um, especially officer-involved shootings, are supposed to be separated immediately and paired with what's called a peer support officer, someone who brings them over, puts them, for instance, like in the back of a car so that they don't speak to other people, so that they don't um, involve themselves in the crime scene. Um, but, you know, these things don't seem to have been forced, these policies, and it is... Uh, so flagrant in some instances that one of the officers, Mike Campbell, he's one of the seven who executes the raid, actually ends up interviewing neighbors, witnesses, um, and, and not only can be seen on video walking down the stairs, uh, having come from upstairs in that unit to speak to neighbors there, he tells investigators in an interview that he does it, and they don't, they don't say anything of it, they don't flinch. Um, we haven't heard back from the department on... Um, what they make of that or, or why they haven't pointed that out or, or why why the officer hasn't been punished. So I want to go to this point about the witnesses. Um, when Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron announced that no charges would be brought in direct connection with Breonna Taylor's death, he emphasized the officers who carried out the search warrant did identify themselves at Taylor's door and noted there was a witness who corroborated the officer's version of events. This is Cameron. Evidence shows that officers both knocked and announced their presence at the apartment. The officer's statements about their announcement are corroborated by an independent witness who was near in a proximity to apartment four. In other words, the warrant was not served as a no-knock warrant. I'm gonna stop you right there, y'all. You see how Attorney General Daniel Cameron lied because it turns out that that 
um, witness he was referring to has recanted his story, said that he haven't heard nothing. Listen. When officers were not, unable to get anyone to answer or open the door to apartment four, the decision was made to breach the door. So that's the Kentucky Attorney General. Um, but according to audio and documents obtained by your news organization, Vice News, that same witness changed his story in months following the raid. In this clip, Vice published this weekend, we hear the original answer given by the only witness who claims to have heard the police identify themselves that night. Did you ever hear anyone identify themselves as police? No, nobody identified himself. This is the witness, is that right? That the attorney general identified as the one who said the police did identify themselves as police, Roberto? This is the witness, yes. This is the key witness. Um, as, as we and other news organizations have pointed out, uh, us as early as July, um, we spoke to over a dozen, dozen neighbors, including neighbors within that unit. Um, we didn't speak to Mr. Sarpy at the time. We, we tried, but, um, but failed in reaching him. Uh, none of the neighbors that we spoke to, including one who lived in the unit, said, said that they heard police announce themselves. And the attorney general hangs quite a bit on them announcing themselves. The importance of this, even if they did have permission for a no-knock warrant, is that when you execute a no-knock warrant, it's important that you immediately breach the door and go in. Because if you're knocking loudly on someone's door and you're not announcing yourself, um, that creates a very dangerous scenario where, where someone is alerted to, to people being at the door. They don't know whom, whom it is. Um, I, th I think that anyone can agree that it's fair to assume it's, it, it could be an intruder, as, as Kenneth Walker says he believed it was. Um, but, um, but the Attorney General only presents what Mr. Sarpy says in the second interview that's recorded with um, the Public Integrity Unit at OMPD. Uh, he, he does not share that the first time they speak with Mr. Sarpy, which is on March 21st, um, a little over a week after uh, the raid that uh, that killed Brianna Taylor, he has a different story. He says that he did not hear anyone, he, he says he, he did not hear anyone announce themselves. Uh, the only way he could tell that there were police was because he saw the word police on their vet, on the vest, the bulletproof vest that they were wearing. Um, and, and this is significant. I, I mean, especially given how little information has been shared with the public um, before we started releasing stories and the way in which all of this was was represented or presented to the public by the attorney general's office last Wednesday um, when, when he shared the, the result of the long awaited investigation. Um, you also wrote a piece headlined initial police report didn't conclude Brianna Taylor's boyfriend shot a cop in the leg. And this is key. I mean, even if he did, um, you have this situation where he didn't know it was cops. He was calling the police saying, help us. But what about this? So this is important because um, it, it's a theme that the attorney general brings up himself in um, explaining that they don't know for sure whether or not Brett Hankison, any of Brett Hankison's bullets hit um, Breonna Taylor. Um, there were differences in ballistics reports and he says that therefore it is inconclusive. Um, that's part of why they were not able to um, charge Brett Hankison with one endangerment um, for, for bullets into Breonna Taylor's apartment for endangering Breonna Taylor. Um, it is unclear to us, um, and we broke this story on Friday, why then um, he also did not present, uh, why he presented um, Kenneth Walker hitting or firing the shot that hit Mattingly as inconclusive as well. He said in the press conference that it's because the bullet that was recovered was a nine millimeter. Um, but the difference between a nine millimeter and what, what is normally shot with a 40 caliber weapon is we very, very seconds. small and the bullet was, and the bullet was mangled. So, um, we believe that it's inconclusive uh, and that the public deserves more information to understand what we know for sure and what we don't and why things are Roberto Ferdman, I want to say thank you so much. We're going to continue to follow this. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us. I would like to give a shout out to Amy Goodman for Democracy Now! for this story about the investigation of what happened with Breonna Taylor. 
Now you heard what they said. They said that those bullets were inconclusive, right? One of the bullets, you know, with respect to Brett Hankerson, that the one of the bullets didn't hit Breonna Taylor. That was also inconclusive. What is also inconclusive, what, you know, Candace Owens don't get or don't know about is that the bullets that shot that officer John Maddenly is also was inconclusive. In other words, you know, Kenneth Walker didn't shoot John Maddenly in the leg as they reported that, they, that it happened. What happened was I believe that Brett Hankerson shot his own partner, which is Sergeant John Maddenly. So even, that, even you saw the video, ladies and gentlemen, that witnesses, 12 of them, including the one that the Attorney General, um, the, the Attorney General Cameron, is claiming that this is why officers was getting on in because there's witnesses that said, it said police. Then he recanted his story and said no, that, that he, he, didn't say, he didn't say police before they broke into the home. So the story is, ladies and gentlemen, that Kenneth Walker had a warning shot through the door, didn't hit nobody. And all of a sudden, shots were fired. Brett Hankerson hit his own partner, Sergeant John Maddenly, in the leg. And then all of a sudden, shots are fired, hitting Breonna Taylor six times, killing her. That's what really happened. But see, the people going, people going to tell you, like a Candace Owens, that um, that Kenneth Walker shot at officer, shot shot the police officer, and it turns out it wasn't true. And you heard it from Democracy Now. You heard it from your, from yourself, ladies and gentlemen, that this also isn't true. That's why you say that it's inconclusive. Of the, the bullets hitting Breonna Taylor from Brett Hankerson was inconclusive, and also Kenneth Walker, who who allegedly reportedly shot John, charged John Maddenly. That's also inconclusive, which means that the bullet really didn't hit um, John Maddenly. And, the, and again, the bullet, um, the, um, the bullet casings was found, and it said from a 9mm handgun. Now remember, guess what? Um, Brett Hankerson owned a 9mm handgun. John Maddenly owned a 40 caliber. So that tells you right there that those casings, and, you, and, why, and then you see... On democracy now, ladies and gentlemen, that you know Brett Hankerson went in, went back to that apartment, even though the officers told him not to. He went back into that apartment to get those shell casings that belongs to him. That's why he said that's theirs in a question mark. So all of this is coming out now. It show you that not only Kenneth Walker being shot, John Maddenly, the, the sergeant, the police officer. That was shot in the leg. And it turns out that his own partner, which is um, Brett Hankerson, that shot him. But again, it showed you that the, it showed you that basically that the the no knock warrant, obviously that it wasn't even supposed to happen. And witnesses, twelve of them, already said that they didn't hear the police officer said police. None of them, including the witness that the attorney general Cameron said it that he, he did. So y'all let me know what you think about this. Like, click, subscribe, and remember to click the notification bell for all the news and commentary. With that being said, this is Lions Insight and off. Deuces.